So the big question is this, how do most agents who don't have access to the secrets that the top agents in our industry hoard to themselves grow and prosper in today's real estate environment? That's the question. And this video podcast is the answer. I'm Pat Hyben and welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. And now for the review of the day. Okay, got a five-star review from the mom 7 The mom 7 says, great show, especially market insight episodes. I love the episodes, but the market insights, which by the way, are the state of the market, which we put out on Wednesdays, enable me to understand the larger national scene and have a broader understanding of the real estate market outside my small area. Keep them going. Thank you, mom007. Keep the comments coming, guys. I love them. And remember, I eat feedback for breakfast, so give me a one-star review if you want or a five-star review if you want. I don't care. And the more reviews we get, the better guests we get. So please, subscribe first and then leave us a review or wherever you're listening. All right, Rockstar Nation, I got a great guest coming from Roseville, California today. I'm excited about Kelly Resendez being on. She is doing some amazing things, helping real estate agents get to levels higher than they've ever been at before. And uh, we got a lot of good stuff to talk about, so I want to get down to it. Kelly, welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. Hi, Pat. I'm so happy to be here with you. Hey, Kelly, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself so they can get to know you better? Sounds good. So, you know, I run a mortgage company out here in Northern California, which is called Paramount Partners Group. And we're just a, a DBA of Lone Pal. And I also am a writer and a speaker and a mom. So I would tell you that I've got a full life, but it keeps me definitely um, passion filled and excited about what I do every single day. All right, Kelly, let's talk about some things like what, you know, what are you seeing now in real estate agents, in your chat groups, in, in your group coaching calls and things like that, like what are some of their biggest concerns or what is the number one biggest concern that real estate agents have uh, so we can try to help solve this for them today? Yeah, I would tell you that it's probably fear, you know, and when, when you think about fear for most of them, it's fear of the uncertainty in the market. You know, we're watching interest rates hit, you know, a, a three-year low and yet there's just a little subtle you know, I would say disturbances about how strong the overall economy is. I would also say another big one is just fear of, you know, kind of their future. Most of them get a little burnout around this time of year. You know, they come through the spring buying season and they're already starting to tell themselves the story that the market is going to go down and there's going to be a seasonal downturn. And then the third thing is just probably the fear of what disruptions are coming for us. You know, as technology really enters into the real estate uh, space and we've got companies that are out there like Open Door and others that are trying to, you know, take a piece of the market, I think that they're focused on, like, is real estate going to change in the future? Yeah, it's interesting because it's been going on for a while where people have been saying, hey, you know, we're about to hit a market slide or we're about to to change things are going to change i mean in california specifically have you seen much of a change we really haven't you know i would tell you that the last year has been very robust for us we've had a really strong economy affordability is still our biggest challenge where people just in in a lot of areas just cannot simply afford to buy a home and so it takes new people coming into those areas to keep the market going and what I try to coach people on is really just being completely detached from the market as being, you know, something that impacts how successful you are. And when you do that, when you have the mindset that it doesn't matter what market I'm in, I'm always going to be able to make the adjustments that are necessary in order to, you know, continuously create sustainable success. Because you think about 08, you know, I had areas here where values went down 50%. Well, you don't have to choose to make less money. 
you can do twice the amount of volume or in, in terms of units that you did before and still end up in the same exact place. So I think really what the market comes down to is having the mindset that it doesn't matter what the market does. I am so nimble and I am so committed to the level of success that I want in my life that I will figure out how to make everything happen in any market. Yeah, I love that fierceness. All right, really cool. What, what, Kelly, what do you, um, like what's hot now in the mortgage industry since you run a mortgage office? Um, like what is a product that agents don't know about or aren't using enough of uh, currently that uh, is great today that might not have been, you know, on their radar four or five years ago? Absolutely. You know, we'd been in such a vanilla market. Quite frankly, it was just a little boring. It was like, oh, 30 year fix, 30 year fix, 30 year fix. And you had to be completely qualified. And what I would tell you, probably the best product out there right now that people aren't understanding is, you know, loans that are non qualified mortgages, or so we call non QM for self employed borrowers. And, you know, I've got one right now where the borrower just on paper does not qualify. And yet, if you look at their bank statements over a certain period of time, they consistently are making income enough to qualify for that loan. And so I would tell you that a lot of times we think somebody or even the consumer believes I can't qualify. But then when you get down to it, there are alternative products out there to help self-employed borrowers or people that. So, so what you're saying is even though they don't have a W-2, even though they don't have a pay stub, if they could just show that their deposits that go in their account, uh, that's enough. Yeah. Yeah. And we can take a combination between personal and business. And that's not uh, very different than your, your so-called liar loans of the 2000 and you know, the very different. 2000, yeah. Because yeah. Cause you just had to be breathing back then, Pat. You were like, I, I, yeah, I've got a pulse. I can get a mortgage loan. Yeah. So here you're showing bank statements, but you're not necessarily showing, um, tax income, returns, ver income verification. Yeah. Right. Tax returns. Very right. Interesting. Hmm. You know, and the bigger lesson is never assume. I think that, you know, one of the one of the greatest beliefs that I have is that I've got to act like a beginner every single day. So I want to be open to the idea that things change and there's new opportunities. But, you know, a lot of times if you've been a seasoned veteran for 20 years, you think you know it all and you could actually be squashing opportunity that there's new product for or there's a different way to look at it. So I would just always assume that I'm going to get it into somebody's hands just to see, just to see if there's any possibility. And also it might be a two year out borrower. If you tell somebody no, it's going to mean no. If you tell them yes, just not yet, they're probably going to be somebody that you can incubate over a longer period of time. Interesting. Interesting. And, and talk to me about competition. It seems like now with brokers coming back on the scene uh, within the mortgage industry, mortgage brokers, um, the, the, the competition is fiercer than ever before um, among uh, lenders, you know, lenders in dealing with agents and keeping agents. So from an agent perspective, uh, what do we need to know about, you know, um, you know, about some maybe antiquated thoughts that agents may have that all mortgage officers and all mortgage rates are going to get are the same. Yeah, what I would say is that the last year we have seen more competition than we ever had. There's been major margin compression as well, which makes it harder to operate a mortgage company just simply because we had companies that came in to the broker scene like Stearns, for example. Well, if all of a sudden somebody's rate sheet is too good to be true, we needed to remember it is. You know, there are, there are strategies behind the scenes where a company might be willing to lose money for a short period of time. Well, wouldn't you know, you know, Stearns is in bankruptcy as of this moment. So there are a lot of things so that- wait a minute, Let's when, slow this down. So Stearns is, and I don't know anything about the mortgage world there. Uh, Stearns is a, is, is, was a brokerage? Like, they're a wholesale lender. They did retail lender. as well. Okay. Yeah. But I would just say when somebody has something that appears too good to be true, it usually is. There's a strategy behind reducing interest rates. We, you know, most of us sell loans to the same places, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, 
um, you know, and then Ginnie Mae as well, which are FHA and VA loans too. So when there's a huge disparity, there's a reason. It might be wrapped up in they're trying to grow their sales team or they're trying to sign up more wholesale lenders right now. So they have a really sharp price knowing that when they get people in, they're going to increase pricing over a period of time. So what you're so saying I is if you're an agent, beware because they, you know, you may see a rate sheet or you may see a, they might, you might get quoted something just to get your first deal. But then yeah. uh, by the time you've been sending them deals for a while, the, the rates are going to be back to your old lender. Is yeah. What you're saying. yeah, absolutely. And I think you've got to focus on the individual that you're working with and knowing that they've got a company behind them that's consistent when it comes to operations. Business was down last year. Everybody was fast. Now that business is up, not everybody is fast any longer. And as an agent, you need somebody that can help you get your contingencies removed quickly. You need somebody that's gonna communicate at the same level, whether they have a full pipeline or only working on a few deals. And that's really what you want because they're a reflection of you to the client and whether or not you're going to end up getting future business from that client. So, you know, if rates are important, absolutely. So you want to make sure everyone's kind of in the same realm. You know, if it's a jumbo loan, I'll be totally honest with you. I, you know, referred one of my best agents to another bank in the last week because I know right now the banks are loaning out some of their jumbo money cheaper than what I can get on the investor side. And so work with somebody that's honest and is going to tell you like right now, like this is, you know, maybe I'm not the best fit for this client and this is what we should do, but I'm still going to make sure that I communicate with you and, and keep myself involved in this so that your client gets the best service and, and rate possible tribeofmillionaires.com. Guys, write that down. Rockstar Nation got a free special offer for you. Now, I've just written a book and it's just been published. Co-authored it with David Osborne, who's been on this show multiple times. If you don't know David, he is one of the top execs at Keller Williams Real Estate, was personally mentored for the last two decades by Gary Keller himself. And he's in all kinds of businesses. His bio and explanation and everything is in this book. But anyways, David and I got together. We decided to write a book. We called it Tribe of Millionaires. And I guarantee you, it's going to change your life. To find out more, just go to tribeofmillionaires.com. We're going to give it to you absolutely free. Only thing we ask in return is, of course, number one, you pay the shipping. Not a big deal. But number two, that you go on Amazon and write us a review. We're really looking to get an incredible amount of reviews. And because of that, we're giving this book away for free. Go to tribeofmillionaires.com today. Hey, real estate agents and rock stars. If you're getting value out of the content in this episode, make yeah. sure you like the video and subscribe to this channel. Also, click the little bell icon to be notified about upcoming episodes. Yeah. And I would also love it if you left a comment and shared the most impactful tips and tactics you've learned from the knowledge shared in this episode, or even maybe make a suggestion requesting a topic of what you'd like to learn in future episodes. I welcome any feedback below. Now, back to the episode. I know a lot of agents have been, um, you know, for the last year, uh, you know, uh, pushing uh, people to buy now, buy now, because rates are, are, you know, at an all time low and they're unequivocally not going to go up and then uh, not going to go down. And then lo and behold, they're starting to go down, at least on the adjustable rate side, um, you know, with the Fed rate lowering. And, and, and so, you know, how, do, how should agents handle that? You know, now they're running around worried that they've been lying for the last year, saying rates can never get any lower. And all of a sudden it looks like they're starting to go lower. Yeah, you know, I would just say be completely honest with your words. Only make commitments to things that you know. Like, I will call you back. I will show you this property. I will, you know, any of these things. You know, when you look at the four agreements, it's such an important aspect. We don't know what the market's going to do. All we can tell somebody is if interest rates were to go up 1%, the payment difference is going to be this. I don't have a crystal ball. You know, all we, all we have really is history. 
right? We have history to be able to look back on and say, okay, when this happens in the economy or that happens, interest rates tend to do this. But we can't be an expert and we don't need to be. Our clients don't need us to be an expert. We just have to look at, you know, what is the need that the client has and is this a good time for them to buy? You know, when you think about it, these were clients a year ago that got interest rates in the high fours. You know, you and I have been around a while in this industry um, and we've seen interest rates that are much higher than that. So that's still a great interest rate. It's just, there's never going to be a guarantee that it's going to be that all time low. Yeah. I like that. I like that. I don't have a crystal ball, but I do have historical data. Yeah. And you can say, Hey, the historical data shows that, you know, it speaks for itself. I don't know what's going to happen. Right. Um, I think the same thing applies to, you know, agents that have been saying, Hey, you know, um, sell your house now because the market is going to slow down. Yeah. Uh, you know, because we're over that seven year cycle or, uh, you know, of most real estate markets last seven years and then start all over seven, eight years. Um, and agents have been saying that and all of a sudden, lo and behold, here we're past that time frame and they're like, oh shit, you know, now I've been a liar for the last, you know, 12, 18 months because I've been telling sellers sell now because yeah. they're going to get less later. How do we handle that? Yeah, what I would say is, again, all you can do is move forward and start just telling people what would happen if. What would happen if the market went down? Here's what your equity positioning would look like instead of making that commitment. Because I look at one of the greatest economic, you know, I would say graphs that any of us ever learned in school, right? So you look at the Phillips curve. It showed unemployment and inflation completely inverse. And that is how all monetary policy was made. Well, all of a sudden, you know, if you make all these monetary policy changes at a, at a national level and what you expected to happen doesn't, then you have to go back and say the curve no longer works. We enjoyed low unemployment and, and you know, and, and inflation was low at the same time for a really long period of time. So there are things that just change. Economies change. You know, there are new ways of looking at things that are introduced. And so we can't use history as it always happens that way. Always are, is what gets us in trouble. Just being open to new possibilities that, wow, what if it was possible that we could enjoy, you know, low unemployment and low inflation at the same time? What if that was possible? Well, it was, right? If they had stuck with this idea that the economy always does the same thing, always, then we would have had a terrible, even worse situation than what we did. Yeah, that's all you can do. So let me shift gears a little bit. And um, I, I want to ask you about a quote but, uh, that, that you had, but I also want to prose this in the form that's going to help real estate agents, going to help both men and women. You said this, uh, uh, this came from a woman client of yours. She, she said, Kelly, help me pick up the shards of glass that fell beside me when I broke the glass ceiling. And um, I, th I thought, man, that first of all, that's poetic. Um, but uh, uh, what the hell was she talking about? And, and what, uh, what advice can you give both to men and women? To and so many women stuff? are in real estate. And I think for the reason that you don't deal with some of the same challenges that people do in the regular work environment, where you know, it's, it's fantastic that women are now in positions that are higher and, you know, we make up a greater, um, you know, percentage of the workforce. But what I would tell you is that there's a lot of unintended things that have happened because of that. You know, women are burning out at a higher rate and 20% of women right now are on anti-psychiatric medication. Okay, which so means, wait a minute, let's, let's slow this down a little bit. Yeah. So, so when you say women are burning out at a higher rate, do you mean women are burning out at a higher rate than men? Yes. So women are burning out at a higher rate than men. What does that mean? Like, what, what, why is that happening? Well, I would tell you that we haven't let go of a lot of the household responsibilities. There's not a lot of equality there. I just got off of an a, a interview earlier this morning, and I'm like, it's not because men aren't just stepping up. A oh, lot of it is that not, women... It's, it's nothing like, oh, men are built, 
born stronger it, mentally. It's, no. It's that women have absolutely more, not more Pat. baggages. <laughs> right? Well, I want to clear it up, right? I mean, you, yeah. women, women's, women live in different worlds with different, yeah. different, different uh, pressures from the sides than men do for the most part, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, again, it's a two-part issue. Um, you know, number, a lot of men weren't raised where they valued doing household chores or valued having a clean environment or doing any of these other things. So it's hard to expect that they're just going to see the same way that we do. And, and women are, I mean, I'd have to tell you, like a lot of the reason why men don't do a lot at home is because the women tell them that they don't do it good enough. And if somebody tells you that you're not enough, enough, times you're going to quit doing those things and so it is it is definitely a systemic issue as a society as a whole that we need to address if we're going to be working 50 percent and and contributing 50 percent of the income we've got to find a way to let go you know and i think this is women have to start this we have to start to let go of a lot of things that we carry on our plate every single day in well, trying to I mean, it could everybody. Be, it could be a men are from Mars, women from Venus thing. I want to talk to you about this a little bit because, yeah. women, I mean, is it true that women tend to be more of a perfectionist than men do? Yeah, I would tell you that most of the women that I work with, even in business or that run companies, have that people-pleasing nature to them where they are trying to appear perfect on the outside. And so they get into a place of inauthenticness where they just, you know, it just requires so much energy not to be real all the time. So if somebody's struggling internally and they're presenting, you know, like they've got it all together, it just takes so much more energy. So really, you know, it's a, it's an interesting thing, uh, you know, what we're talking about. We didn't plan on it this way, but, <laughs> you know, um, it, it, it makes sense because, culturally you know it's not it goes against cultural norms for women not to give a crap for females not to give a crap about you know what they do how they look um and and that sort of thing where a man could literally you know not shave for a week or or you yeah. know every photo he has a hat on backwards and it wouldn't and it wouldn't really matter right, right. um but for women in our society, it does, or, or, or the pressures are there that it should, and therefore they've got more on their plate. Yeah, but then you add on dealing with our children and aging parents, and maybe we don't have as much passion for our job as we used to, because you can admit real estate and mortgage can be a little groundhog say at time. So I think it just comes down to that matter of, like if we aren't experiencing a high level of joy and alignment in our life, we will burn out. And you know, 20%, that means 20% of women have gone to a doctor and said, I'm depressed, I'm anxious, I'm stressed out. And when you look at that statistic, it's just too high. Like we've got to get away from the busyness that so many people have. Like you can run a successful real estate business and just have a full schedule without feeling busy. And it's, it's about like really diving in and working on your life and your business rather than just, you know, being in it every single day. Yeah. Well, I mean that, well, that's what, that's what this leads to, right. Is you're, you're going to teach us how, right. So, so, I mean, you run, you run busy, right. You've got, uh, you've I run got, full. You've got your, okay. You run full. You've got your fingers in a lot of shit. Like you've got your coaching company, mortgage company, what else you got going? Um, well, I would say my women's empowerment company, which is Big Voices. Women's empowerment, Big Voices. Uh, you're involved in in Go Abundance for Women now. Um, yes. And uh, and 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 so, how do you keep it all together? And and you got kids, you got teenagers, uh, and you travel a lot. Um, so, how do you do it? Maybe we can learn from you. Yeah, it absolutely starts with getting my priorities and my life vision in order. So I know just clearly what my priorities are. And when I schedule my day, they, it, it, they have to show up every single day. So for me, I'll just tell you the really quick, it's just God, God comes first. So in my morning ritual, that's what I start my day with is prayer and other things like that to make sure that I put that first. And then it's my emotional and physical well-being. So I've got to do my morning routine. I've got to stay in a place where 
I am in a, you know, in a, in a place where nobody's going to steal my joy. I journal every day. So I exercise five times a week. So my self-care comes first and then it's my kids. And if I have a relationship and then it's my job and then it's, you know, so on and so forth. But I make sure that my priorities show up. And in order to do that, I've got to have a lot of energy. And I'm not the person that's going to tell you that you've got to work a ton of hours to be productive. I believe the opposite. I believe when you're in flow, opportunity just comes to you and you have to work less and less hard. So if you believe that hard work is what equals success, your life's going to be hard work. And if you believe that money flows to me just because I'm freaking amazing and I'm just going to have opportunities, then that's what's going to happen. So the power of my thinking is what drives a lot of the success and ability for me to be in balance on a regular basis. So, you know, and having that life vision where you're like, how do I want to feel? Like, how do I want to feel at work? Well, I want to feel fulfilled. I want to feel like there's meaning. Well, I better have deeper connections with my team. I better make sure that I'm not doing too many things that I don't love doing on a regular basis, or that's where my joy is going to start to diminish a little bit. So it's about that and then putting in place strategies and habits every single day to help keep that running. Hey, real estate rock stars. This is Pat Hyben. And before we jump back into today's content, I want to tell you about an extraordinary offer from an extraordinary company. I'm talking about my Outdesk, if you haven't heard of my Outdesk, basically they are a virtual assistant company, a VA company that specializes in virtual assistants for real estate agents. Yeah, I'm talking about transaction coordinators, marketing assistants. I'm talking about ISAs, inside sales agents that prospect thousands and thousands of seller leads and buyer lead follow-ups. I mean, these guys are trained in this stuff specifically. You're not using a company that doesn't know or understand real estate sales. Four out of five of the top teams in the U.S. use my Outdesk for their virtual assistants. And because I know the owner, Daniel Ramsey, I've known him for over a decade, and I know how awesome and incredible this company is and how it saves agents thousands and thousands of dollars every single week and makes them thousands and thousands of more every single week. We are going to give you a $400 coupon off of your first month of a virtual assistant and give you a free book entitled Scaling Your Business with Virtual Professionals. So you can like read it and look into it before you decide anything. It's called Scaling Your Business with Virtual Professionals. And you can get it real easy. All you got to do is text the word HIBAN, H-I-B-A-N, to 31996. That's H-I-B-A-N to 31996. And download your free book, Scaling Your Business with Virtual Professionals. And don't forget to mention also that you get a $400 discount, which will give you a coupon for that when you download the book. Thank you, guys. And I hope you enjoy and make a ton of money using my Outdesk. Yeah, fascinating. I mean, that's uh, I mean that's great advice, and and I've heard it many times before, right? It ties into the the How Elrod Miracle Morning, and and you you know getting your head straight. Yeah. First and foremost, and then everything else, you know, will fall into place. What? Uh, let, let's talk about what what you predict uh, of the future here. Like, what do you think is going to happen? Uh, what are agents going to start seeing in the real estate and the mortgage market in the next say? you know, 12 to 24 months. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, we're going to demand a higher level of professional to be at the level of success that many agents have enjoyed. You know, when you think about communication, it's probably the number one thing that clients say is important to them. And agents will agree with that. And I've probably spoken to over a thousand agents since the beginning of this year. And I've asked a question, how many of you have taken a communications course in the last year? one person, one. And I'm like, how could the most important thing in your business be something that you aren't investing more time in learning how to do? And so we've got to get away from just believing that we are, we're done. Like we're, you know, I am who I am and you've got to commit to growth because I believe the first level 
of building sustainable success is really that focus on who you're being. And so you've got to develop more skills. You've got to be able to overcome objections better. You've got to be able to remove abundance blocks that might be stopping you from attracting in more of, of like-minded clients. So I really believe that we're going to demand higher professionalism. And the reason is there's going to be a disparity between lower cost options and traditional agents. And when somebody's making that decision, they need to see clearly, I am working with a specialist. These are their negotiation skills. These are the things that they're gonna do different to be able to help me make a, a better real estate decision. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it all goes back to, it all goes back to the basics when, when times start tightening up, you know, and, uh, and, and now more than ever, you're right, you need, you need to be, you need to think like a, a, a lawyer or a doctor and, and specialty certainly yeah. helps, helps them um, make more money. You know, differentiate. Uh, the more specialist yeah. you are, the more money you make. So, uh, absolutely. So, good stuff. Well, Kelly, let's move on to your free gift. Uh, as you know, everybody that comes on the show brings a free gift. I'm going to put Kelly's free gift at hybendigital.com backslash Kelly and the letter R um, to make it easy for you guys. K E L L Y. That's K E L L Y R. Hybendigital.com backslash Kelly R. What's your free gift you're bringing today, Kelly? Yeah, so basically what you're going to get is my Big Voices Essential Toolkit, which is going to help you write a new story in your life. It really goes through how do I create my priorities, my vision for how I want to live in my life, what are the most important questions that I can answer daily, your goals, and then it gives you three major strategies that I coach on, which will help you be that professional and be in a better state of, I would say, emotional intelligence, which is... You know, how are you going to manage overthinking in, in challenging times? How are you going to manage emotional triggers? And how do you overcome self-sabotage? Because most of us know that's what gets us. It's normally ourselves, not anything externally. So where you're going to find that is just, you got to take my quiz at bigvoicesrisequiz.com and just kind of go through and it's just going to give you some, some feedback as well. That's awesome. And guys, I'm going to, I'm going to put all of that in the show notes. So if you just, if you're driving down the road, you don't need to write this down. Just, just uh, go to the show notes at Kelly's episode. I'm also going to um, take her free gift. I'm going to put it in the agent success toolbox and, awesome. um, and that, that'll be at hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or texting the word toolbox to 444-999. That's toolbox to 444-999. 999 Kelly this has been a blast a best of luck to you in Rosedale California if I'm ever in that area if I ever come out that way to see my good buddy Timmy Road uh, yeah. I will definitely look you up and we can uh, meet face to face and awesome. break, some, break some bread very good and thank you because as i said you got to work on you and you know your university is just a great place for people to go and, and pour into their own skill building and professionalism so thank you yeah my pleasure i want you to think about the word toolbox what is a toolbox a toolbox is a box full of tools that you use to build something great at Real Estate Rockstars, we've created our own free toolbox. So everybody that comes on the show as a guest brings a tool with them. And we plow them all into this toolbox and we give it away for our viewing audience to basically use as they wish. Everything we put in there is an actionable item that can be downloaded, can be printed, can be used immediately. And we got things like scripts and dialogues, checklists for teams, checklists to keep agents accountable, referral forms that are filled out at settlement to get referrals by your buyers and sellers. Everything you could think of that you could use on a regular basis about real estate is included in this toolbox. And it's helping agents worldwide sell more houses and make their jobs a lot easier and processes much more efficient. And the thing is, it's absolutely free. All you gotta do is go to hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or text the word toolbox to 444-999. That's toolbox 444-999. Do it now. 
Rockstar Nation, thank you for listening to Real Estate Rockstars. Listen, I need a favor. If you find this free content helpful, if you find our downloadable items from each guest helpful, please, I need you to pull out your pointing finger. Yes, the one finger that points at people and hit subscribe. Yes, subscribe. The more subscribers we get, the better we look in the ratings and the easier it is to get guests like Robert Kiyosaki, Barbara Corcoran, all the players that are on million dollar listing in the different cities. All that stuff makes it easier the more subscribers we get. So please subscribe. And listen, there's a lot of places you can leave comments. There's a lot of places you can like. We're on Facebook. We have an Instagram page. Instagram page is I am Pat Hyben. The Facebook is Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Feel free to leave us comments there. The most popular form of commenting seems to happen on YouTube. Yes, for whatever reason, it's a, a very open environment. So just go to YouTube and go to Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Leave us comments there. Some of them we will read on the show. We love your feedback. So thanks, guys, and I hope you are having a great day. Oh, and also, listen, if you're going to subscribe and you haven't already left a review on iTunes, please do that too. Have a great day and thanks so much, Rockstar Nation. I really appreciate you.